The banking crisis just got worse. Welcome back and I wish I had better news, but for the first time since the recession has started, I am actually concerned about the banking crisis. And over the past couple months, we've seen a handful of banks fail. And it's reported that another 186 banks in the United States are at risk for failure. 2008, bank failures accounted for $373 billion in failed assets. But already in 2023, failed bank failures account for $548 billion in failed assets. This has already surpassed the 2008 by a long shot and it's assuming that this is just the beginning of the banking crisis. And on top of all of this, it's reported that US banks are sitting on $1.7 trillion in unrealized losses, making the trillion dollar banking crisis three times bigger than 2008 already. Whether it's First Republic or Silicon Valley Bank, each time people are telling us it's everything's going to be okay, don't be worried about it. Well now, bank stocks are declining very rapidly and the problem is it's getting worse and worse every day and it feels like the fed isn't taking this seriously at all a report came out that said a majority of banks are actually insolvent and towards the end i will go over the banks that are still safe for everyone's money so right now things are ugly every day it seems like there's 20 plus stock halts on bank stocks and this is just the new normal and we are expected to live like this so I think these are the cracks in the ice that no one wants to talk about. So here are the banks that are next on the chopping block. PacWest, down 47%. Western Alliance Bank, down 22%. First Horizon Bank, down 40%. Home Street Bank, down 11%. Metropolitan Bank, down 10%. Citizens Bank, down 10%. Zions Bank, down 9%. Keycorp Bank, down 9%. And Valley National, down 9%. If this isn't showing us what's some insight on what's happening, I'm not sure what will. Things are breaking down right in front of us. 48 percent of Americans are concerned if their money is safe and the VIX which it measures fear basically has spiked by 35 percent since its lows. I agree this is scary. In 2008 no one predicted a recession. I know it's surprising because it hurt a lot. A lot of people lost their cars, lost their homes. Well fast forward to today this is the most predicted recession of all time. Is this going to be a good thing or is it going to be a bad thing? On one hand it could be a worse recession than we expect because we know it's coming and the fear is already baked into it. On the other hand, we are more prepared, so maybe it won't hurt as bad. Well, to me, it seems obviously that we are not more prepared. Yesterday, the Federal Reserve just increased interest rates once again. If you don't know, the interest rate increases are making it particularly hard for regional banks. Short story is they're exposed to assets that are affected by interest rates directly. And the more the interest rates go up, the more the banks hurt, okay? If you know it's coming, are you gonna be more prepared? Well, no. If we know a recession is coming, then economic tightening, as in raising the interest rates, might not be the best thing to do right now, and that's exactly what we're doing. So let's look back at the 2008 crisis. That's really where the last benchmark that we have to go off of is from. And I understand it's different than what we are at now, but we gotta look back at it and at least get some, some sort of data set. In 2007, the Fed raised interest rates above 5%, which is before the Great Recession of 2008, which is a recession no one predicted. Whether interest rates played a part in that or not, you, you make that up for yourself. But what's interesting is interest rates are just now, we just hit it yesterday, are at the same level as they were right before the downfall of the Great Recession. It's no secret that interest rates make it really hard to make money, but is this really the right move right now? Increased rates make the balance sheets on banks worth less, so like their bonds and commercial real estate are continuing to go down in value. But increasing interest rates also does one thing, it incentivizes people to move their money out of the banks from their, you know, 0.1% checking account and move it into like a money market fund that yields roughly 5%. Look at this chart. In the green is the yield of the money market fund. It matches the federal fund target and it's almost a no risk investment. The black lines at the bottom represent savings and checking accounts and they simply cannot compete with the money market funds. And pair that with another rate increase yesterday, this almost ensures that bank runs are not over and they possibly will get much worse. So many banks are already on the edge, the edge of failure. A Hoover Institute report calculates more than 2,300 are currently sitting on assets worth less than their liabilities. 2,300 different banks, yeah, that's over 50% of US banks. Bill Ackman and Peter Schiff have accurately predicted the 2008 crisis, and most people have said that this is just a one-off event, they got lucky, it, it'll only happen once. Well, also remember, most people call themselves experts and have been wrong about monetary policy over and over, especially thinking these last couple of years. So maybe it's time we do start listening to these people, and Ackman says that the banking crisis is far from over. And at the end of the day, I agree, it's obvious that things are playing out right in front of us. Bank contagion is a real thing, and thanks to technology, Technology like our phones and social media, banks can just collapse overnight. One morning, they can just be gone. At one point in history, you couldn't just tweet to warn people, and a failure would be a word of mouth thing, and it would take a while. So now, 
It can literally happen overnight. So no wonder if people are so scared. Schiff is recommending gold and gold is approaching its all time highs again. So it seems like he is right at least about that. And I think they both might be right about the upcoming economic failures as Schiff is very critical of the overall banking crisis right now. So what banks are gonna be the safest? I don't really wanna play into the hype, but at the end of the day, the biggest banks are gonna be the safest. They have the most eyes on them, so they're not gonna have any funny business and they're not gonna mess around and misplace your money. These are the banks that you won't wake up to a message that your bank has failed and your money is gone. So number one, we have JP Morgan number two, Bank of America, and number three, Citigroup Bank. So these are tricky times and it, it might get ugly. So keep your money safe, save as much as possible. I promise there will be some great deals when this is all over. Until then, please like the video and help more people out. Subscribe to Stay in the Loop and I will see you in the next one.